Hello everyone. Today we will study about the aims and the objectives of teaching mathematics. Let us start with the first basic question that what are aims? The aims of teaching stands for the goals, targets or broader purposes that may be fulfilled by teaching. Aims are like ideals and their attainment needs a long term planning. Aims are general and long term goals. Aims may be common to more than one subject. Long term goals refer to high level aims and tend to be related to the broader reasons like why a particular subject or activities are being organized or why a particular course is being done. The realization of aims is not an easy task. Therefore, they are divided into the definite, functional and the workable units which are named as objectives. Now, let us study about objectives. Objectives are short term, immediate goals or the purposes that may be achieved within the specified classroom situation. Objectives help in bringing behavioral change in the learners for the ultimate realization of aims of teaching. The objectives are specific, immediate and attainable goals. Objectives are specific to one subject. They are precise and clearly defined. As of now, we have understood about the aims and the objectives of teaching. Now, let us study about the aims of teaching in context to mathematics. The aim of teaching mathematics are to enable the child to understand the use of numbers and quantities related to their daily life. To enable the child to solve the mathematical problems in his daily life. To familiarize the child with the latest mathematical knowledge to fulfill the existing needs of the society. To develop in the child the fundamental skills and process of mathematization. To develop the habit of self-confidence, self-realization, discovery attitude, habit of concentration and hard work. It also includes to develop in the child the mental parts like thinking, reasoning, etc. To impart the practical knowledge of mathematics to solve the day-to-day -day problems and to develop the abilities of analysis, synthesis, reasoning and computation. Objectives of Teaching Mathematics the objectives imply the changes that we try to bring about in the student's behavior. Objectives indicate the direction of the student's growth and provides the basis for the selection of evaluation procedures. Objectives provide a link between the teachers and the students by focusing their attention with intended outcomes of learning. The objectives validate the process of education and have the characteristics like they provide the direction to the activities, they help for the planned change and they provide a basis for organizing teaching and learning activities. A well-defined objective provides the basis for systematization, articulation, unity, balance and for determining priorities in an educational effort. The objectives provide a basis for planning and for organizing of learning experiences. Now let us study the differences between the aims and objectives. The aims are general and long term goals while the objectives are specific and immediate. The aims cannot be achieved 100%. 
while the objectives can be achieved 100%. Philosophy and sociology are the main source of aims, while psychology is the main source of objectives. Aims are not definite and clear, while the objectives are definite and clear. The aims are subjective in nature, while the objectives are objective in nature. Aims are attained during the ed entire educational process, while the objectives are attained in the time period of the classroom. Objectives are the part of aim, while the objectives are the means to achieve the aims. To achieve the aims is the responsibility of school, society and the nation, while the objectives are the responsibility of the teachers. Aims change according to the needs of the society, while the objectives are fixed but they differ for each content. Aims are theoretical and direct, while the objectives are direct and concerned with the teaching learning process. Aims are formal while the objectives are functional and informative. Classification of objectives Many educationists try to classify the objectives. A number of attempts have been made by the experts in the field of classification of the educational objectives. The most widely used system of classification is the Bloom's taxonomy. The term taxonomy has been derived from two Greek words, taxis meaning arrangement and norms meaning law. So the word taxonomy means orderly arrangement. As the objectives are concerned with the change in the behavior of the students, so Dr. Benjamin S. Bloom classified the changes of behavior into three categories or the domains. These domains are cognitive domain, affective domain and the psychomotor domain. All these domains are interrelated as shown in the figure. These domains are hierarchical in nature. Hierarchical means that the most basic process involved in the learning that is the mental process of trying to understand comes under the cognitive domain, then the affective domain and finally comes the psychomotor domain. Bloom and his associates gave the further classification of these objectives and the classification of the cognitive domain was given by Bloom himself. The classification of the affective domain was given by Krethfall and the classification of the psychomotor domain was given by Simpson. Now let us understand these three domains. The first one is the cognitive domain or the cognitive objectives. The cognitive objectives are concerned with the mental skills. It is defined to include all those activities which deals with the recall or the recognition of knowledge and to develop the intellectual abilities and the skills. Cognitive objectives stress that the student should acquire more and more knowledge and the individuals proceed from the lower order thinking skill to the higher level thinking skills. Affective Domain Affective objectives are concerned with the attitude, interest, emotions, values and the mental tendencies of the students. This part of the taxonomy also includes appreciation and the social adjustment of the child. 
psychomotor domain. Psychomotor domain is the third domain of learning and it is based on actions. It focuses on change and the development in the behavior or the skills. The physical actions like handwriting, playing, using equipments, making outlines, drawing figures and many other are in psychomotor domain. Cognitive domain or the Bloom's taxonomy. Dr. B. S. Bloom concentrated his study on the cognitive domain. According to him, the first activity is a mental process of trying to understand, analyze, synthesize or associate the information with something already known and this thought process comes under cognitive domain. He assumed that in thinking about a problem, a hierarchy of cognitive process is involved. While teaching, the teacher follows this hierarchical orders and this classification of the educational objectives is called the taxonomy of educational objectives or the Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom classified the cognitive domain into following six categories. These are knowledge, understanding or comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis and evaluation. Knowledge is the first and the lowest level of the cognitive domain and it includes the recall of the information and the facts. Comprehension Comprehension is the second category which includes translation, interpretation and extrapolation of the ideas. Application Application is the third level and it includes the ability to apply the abstract ideas to a concrete situation. Analysis Analysis includes the breakdown of the material into the constituent parts. Like while teaching the word problems in maths, the problems are taught by breaking them into different parts and then finding out the relationship of the parts. Synthesis Synthesis is just opposite of analysis and it includes the putting together of the elements of the or the parts so as to form a whole. Finally comes the evaluation. Evaluation is a process to characterize the value of the work. The hierarchy of the effective objectives are receiving, responding, valuing, conceptualization, organization and characterization. And similarly, the hierarchy of the psychomotor objectives which was given by Simpson are impulsion, manipulation, control, coordination, naturalization and habit formation. List of action verbs Bloom suggested a list of action verbs for each category of cognitive objectives and while writing the objectives under different categories a teacher can use these action verbs for writing the objectives like for knowledge the action verbs that can be used for writing the objectives are the child will be able to define to state list recognize select measure recall or write similarly for writing the objectives under the comprehension part the teacher can use the action verbs like the child will be able to explain to translate classify judge interpret formulate indicate or select for writing the objectives 
for the application part the teacher can use the action verbs like to compute demonstrate construct predict find and use in the same way for writing down the objectives for the analysis part the teacher can use the action verbs like the child will be able to analyze compare discriminate conclude divide criticize select or justify for writing down the objectives for the synthesis part the teacher can use the action verbs like the child will be able to discuss to organize to summarize conclude generalize or select and similarly for writing the objectives for the evaluation the teacher can use the action verbs like the child will be able to judge to criticize to identify avoid defend and evaluate in this way a teacher can write down the objectives this is all about the aims and objectives of teaching mathematics thank you